Hello and welcome to this session on problem-listic retrieval. The plan today is to talk about retrieval status value, but before I get into retrieval status value, let me uh, refresh uh, the basic ideas of probabilistic retrieval uh, quickly. So here, uh, let's assume we have a information need, which is Taj Mahal, uh, and the query is assumed to be Taj. So we hired two judges to look at the three results that we obtained, uh, Taj, Taj Mahal, and Taj D. And judge one claimed that Taj is relevant, whereas, Taj, uh, whereas judge two uh, uh, claimed that Taj is not relevant. And uh, similarly, Judge 1 and Judge 2, judge two uh, provided several relevance judgments like this. So, um, we can now go ahead and compute probability of relevance. Uh, probability of relevance P uh, R equals 1 given uh, D and Q, given the document D and the query Q uh, can be computed as follows. Um, we go back and see that uh, uh, one judge thinks that this is relevant and one doesn't. So we give a value of 0.5 uh, to this uh, document. So probability that uh, R is 1 given D equals Taj and Q equals Taj is thus 0.5. Similarly, we can uh, compute for, for Taj Mahal for instance, both the judges thought that it is relevant. So we give a value of 1 for uh, probability that R is 1 given D and Q, uh, which is read as uh, probability of relevance. Uh, uh, so probability of relevance for Taj Mahal is 1 in this case. For uh, probability of relevance for D equals D3, which is Taj D, uh, um, and uh, query Q, which is Taj, is 0 because both the judges thought that it is a non relevant document. Now we can use this score to uh, rank documents. So, according to probability ranking principle, we can rank documents by the probability of relevance. Uh, and in this case, we are assuming that the relevance judgments are binary, uh, meaning they can have uh, values of only 0 and 1. The probability ranking principle states that we can rank documents by the probability of relevance. So, if I do that, the highest scoring document in this case is Taj Mahal. So Taj Mahal gets the first rank, then we have Taj and then finally Taj T. Bayes optimal decision rule goes ahead and uh, adds one more criteria for ranking. So here it says that a document D is relevant if probability of R equals 1 given D comma Q is greater than uh, probability of R equals 0 given D comma Q. So if you look at it, uh, this works only for, um, up, this applies only for Taj Mahal, where 1 is greater than 0. In all other cases, either the value is less than uh, probability of R equals 0 or equal. So for instance, in this case, uh, both the probabilities are equal. So we have the result only as Taj Mahal. Um, the, the actual challenge is in predicting uh, these uh, relevance values. Uh, so in the earlier case, uh, we hired some judges who gave us uh, the judgments of whether a document is relevant to the query or not. But in reality, this kind of uh, hiring of judgments for every query is not feasible. So let's say um, we model the query and documents as set of words. Uh, and uh, since it's a set of words, obviously, we are only here talking about uh, existence or not uh, or, or absence of terms in these uh, documents and queries. And uh, let's assume from click logs or through the lay, uh, or through judges, we have uh, the relevance information. So this table says that uh, uh, D1, which has uh, the words X sub I, X sub J, and so on, uh, is relevant to query Q1, which uh, uh, which has the terms X sub 1, X sub 2, and so on, um, uh, are, uh, uh, are relevant to each other. And since uh, this doc D1 is relevant to the query Q1, uh, and that is given by a binary relevance score of 1. Uh, 
facts. Here, let me introduce you the binary independence model. Uh, so here, in binary independence model, we make two assumptions. The first assumption is that each document is a binary vector of terms. Uh, so this follows from our uh, set of words model, where we say that either a term exists or it doesn't exist in our document. And the second assumption we make is the occurrence of terms is mutually independent. This allows us uh, to keep the model simple and uh, be able to compute uh, the similar compute the relevant scores uh, much more easily. Uh, we'll look at it. Uh, look at that in a moment. Uh, so, with the uh, the assumption of binary independence model, we look forward to compute uh, the probability of relevance, uh, which is probability of R equals one given uh, D and Q. So, we uh, remember the Bayes rule. We can fit uh, this into the Bayes rule. So, we have uh, the likelihood and the prior. Uh, so this acts as a posterior to, to obtain the probability of relevance. Uh, we could observe the data or probability of uh, observing a document given uh, that it is relevant uh, under query. Uh, so we are just flipping this across. We have probability of r equals one given t comma q is probability of d given r equals one comma q times uh, the prior, which is probability of r equals one given q over uh, probability of d. How does it all work? Uh, let me illustrate this with an example. Um, in our case, let's say I want to compute probability that the document is Taj given relevance equals one and query. So how how can I how can I do this? I'm sorry. So how can I uh, do this? So observe that. Uh, probability of uh, uh, d equals uh, so in order to compute the probability of relevance I need to compute uh, three things uh, the numerator has two components and the denominator has one component. so let's look at the first component of the numerator which is probability of d given r equals 1 and q so that's what I have listed here in our case d is large so for each document let's start computing this probability. D is Taj and we are interested in computing the uh, uh, relevance where R equals 1 and uh, query Q is Taj. So I have omitted the value of query here because uh, we for the moment have only one query which is Taj. Uh, similarly, we also want to compute probability, the prior probability which is probability of R equals 1 given Q equals Taj and then uh, probability of uh, D equals Taj given Q equals Taj. So these are the three things that we need to compute. So what would be the value for the first component? So here is the answer. Uh, if you look at this data that we have, it can be uh, represented using this Euler diagram. Um, so we have only three documents. So we have assumed equal probability of uh, uh, surfacing them for a query. Uh, so they each carry a probability of 1 over 3 and we have only two cases r equals 0 and r equals 1 um, the prior probability of them happening is the same and finally we know that um, uh, Taj Mahal is on the r equals 1 side whereas Taj T is on the r equals 0 side uh, because both the judges felt that Taj T is irrelevant and the Taj uh, uh, one judge felt that it is relevant whereas one didn't uh, so we assign 0.5 probability for both r equals 0 and r equals 1 case. So one way to visualize this table is like this uh, Euler diagram. Now that we have this Euler diagram uh, it should be fairly straightforward to compute these probabilities. So what is the probability that d is Taj uh, and r is 1 uh, and given that we have the query. Uh, so if it is given that r is 1, uh, then uh, we are looking at 1 over 6 over uh, 1 over 6 plus 1 over uh, 3. So that's uh, 3 over 6, uh, sorry, 1 over 6 over 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3, which is 1 over 6 over uh, uh, 
uh, 1 over 6 plus 2 over 6 is 3 over 6 or 1, 1 by 2. So we get uh, 1 by 3. So let me see if I can write it down. So here uh, we are looking at uh, 1 over 6, which is the property of uh, uh, d equals charge given r equals 1. And uh, to compute the property, we need the whole. Uh, so we have to divide with uh, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. So now that r is 1, which is given, so we don't consider r equals 0 case. Now, if you work this out, uh, this should be 1 over 6 over uh, 2 over 6. So that's 3 over 6. And this is how is only about uh, 1 over 3. Uh, property of R uh, equals 1 is pretty straightforward since this is symmetrical, uh, this property is half. And probability that D is charge is 1 over 3 because we initially have assumed that all the documents have equal probability of surfacing. So now that I have probability of D given R equals 1 and Q, so this component is 1 over 3 and probability of r equals 1 given q is half. So we have computed these two. And probability of d given q is 1 over 3. We have computed that as well. So when we put all these things together, uh, we get the posterior probability, uh, which is uh, the probability of relevance, which happens to be half. So now, um, can we make this computation simpler and easier? Um, Sometimes computing odds is much uh, easier than computing the probabilities. Uh, so let's see what happens if we try to compute the odds of relevance instead of probability of relevance. Recall that uh, odd of A is nothing but probability of A over uh, probability of A not happening or one uh, probability of A over 1 minus probability of A. In that case, uh, odds of relevance is simply probability of r uh, equals 1 over probability of r equals 0, of course, given a document under query. Um, now, this uh, can be expanded using Bayes' rule as this. And note that uh, uh, the denominators cancel away. Uh, and we have the numerators as this. So this is the advantage of using odds over here. This denominator is very expensive to compute. And luckily, um, since we are computing odds now, they get cancelled out. Now we apply the binary independence model assumptions. Uh, recall that there are there were two assumptions. The first assumption is that uh, we are dealing with binary vectors. So either terms exist or don't exist. Uh, that's one assumption. And the second assumption is the independence assumption, where the existence of the terms, uh, uh, the terms are mutually uh, independent. So the existence of one term does not affect the existence of the other. So given that we have these two assumptions, now we can decompose uh, this part uh, as uh, a product uh, of uh, the probability of terms. So for so this document vector, uh, which is a binary vector of terms, uh, is now getting decomposed uh, here. So let's assume there are m terms uh, in the document vector. So we simply have, uh, uh, so probability of x is simply probability of um, the first term appearing and the property of second term appearing and the property of third term of may, uh, appearing uh, multiplied uh, to each other. So, so I can simply take a product uh, from e equals 1 to m, uh, probability of xt uh, instead of uh, the x vector. So by introducing the product over here. And this follows from our uh, independence assumption. All right. Um, now that we have this, I can further split this as uh, xt equals 1 and xt equals 0. So there are two cases. Um, in our document, a particular term may exist or uh, may not exist. Uh, so I split that into two cases. Uh, so uh, along with t equals, uh, I mean, uh, al uh, along with this product um, criteria, so I, I add one criteria here, which is uh, xt equals one case, and in this case, uh, the xt is zero. So let's call uh, this part as uh, pt, and uh, let's call uh, 
uh, this part as uh, ut. So we have a pt over dt. So let's call this as, this as pt and this as ut. So we have a pt over dt and 1 minus pt over 1 minus ut. And note that uh, we only need to do this for the query terms and not for all terms. So we can introduce uh, qt equals 1 uh, as well. So we don't have to uh, do this product for uh, non-query terms. Okay, can we uh, simplify this further? Yes, uh, if you look at it, uh, this part does not depend on the document. There is no component with x anywhere here. So, and we are interested in ranking. So we don't care for the absolute scores. We only need to ensure that uh, the ranking is intact. So we can remove the constant. So all we need to do, uh, if we were to use odds of relevance as a ranking method, is uh, simply to compute this part. And this part is uh, what uh, is equal to this part. Okay. We can do one more manipulation here. Um, from here, so this is uh, the case where xt is 0 and query term is 1. In other words, for every term here, we are multiplying with this. So if for every term here, I don't want to include xt equals 0, uh, what can I do? So I can simply divide this with every term here uh, and then just get rid of uh, this condition xt equals 0. That's what I have done here. So when the xt equals 0 part goes away, I need to uh, multiply the first part uh, with the inverse of the reciprocal of uh, this part. Uh, so that's what I am doing here. Uh, so this is simply juggling around the components so that we have uh, uh, two components where one of them does not depend on uh, the document at all. So look at this. So this has only this depends only on the query term and not on the uh, document at all. So we can remove this part as well and it should not matter for query. So what is left out is this part, the first part. Uh, so product over all these uh, such that xt equals 1 and qt equals 1 um, um, of pt times 1 minus ut over ut times 1 minus pt. Um, is all we need uh, to rank documents. We call this as a retrieval status value and we use this for ranking documents. Uh, the only tricky part in this is uh, perhaps the removal of uh, xt equals 0. Um, so that's the only thing that you need to be careful about. So when you remove xt equals 0 from this side. Actually, we are not removing it. We are only ma uh, manipulating um, uh, things such that uh, uh, this part is moved here. And in order to move that xt equals 0 is equivalent to this side, we, we had to divide uh, this uh, from here. So that's all we did um, to get to this. So this is called a relevant state a retrieval status value, uh, which we use in ranking. Thank you.